Okay, let's see how this works. I have this new thing. I can hold the camera, but it's kind of springy. Let's see if I need to move the mic, I think. Let's put it here, see how that works. I'm not sure if this is gonna work. Okay. It's a lot wider view, that's good. Anyway, we'll see. We'll see. Back getting water. Well, you know, I'll tell you, this uh, trail that I go on to get water, it's like an old friend now, after all these, well, not that many years, but a number of years of coming up now. A little bit of rust on that. So-called stainless steel. Yeah. So not only is the trail a friend, but when I do this, I, actually, I see human friends. <laughs> I saw Pisu Tan and her neighbor today on the way up. I think that... It's hard for me to remember names. Um, her neighbor just up, up the hill a little ways. She's told me to come back. And I think she's giving me some this vegetable that she has growing, you know. Fuck male is what it's called, but I don't know if that's Central Thai or Northern Thai. I think maybe Central Thai. I'm not sure. Anyway. Yeah, anyway. We'll see what... <laughs> I kind of understood a third, I'd say. Not even half. But I think I got the gist of it. So we'll see how that goes. Anyway. Another water walk. So we're into February. I can't quite remember the actual date. Early February sometime. What is the date? I don't know. Oh, this is going to be a totally boring water walk. <laughs> I can tell. I ain't got nothing to say. Oh, the water's running slower now. It's drying, eh? So we're in February, mid-February. It's starting to get warm. Up here. I mean, down in Bangkok, I'm um, down in Chiang Mai, it's like uh, 34 to 38. It looks like, when I look at the forecasts. It's quite warm, actually, 38. Anyway, it's not usually that hot, but it's, it's getting warm. But it's still cool at night, though, which is nice. It's nice for my mom in the city. Like, I'm pretty sure it's going down to... 18 there, 17 maybe at night. It's very comfortable. I don't think she hardly ever uses her air conditioning except maybe for an afternoon nap or something. I should probably move the mic because you're probably hearing more water here. Hang on a sec. Let's see if we can do this without making camera. Back. Oops, that's not going to work. I don't think that's going to work at all. Shoot. Oh, what if we do this? No, no, that's not <laughs> What a mess. <laughs> what a disaster. How about... Well, I'll just put it back here, I guess. It's going to have to do. It's going to have to do. Well, I'm just going to have to put it where it was. Maybe this isn't... The talking is... The blabbing isn't so important. It's the water. It's the water that counts. Yeah, so I'm... What's going on? The My Dang guitar is pretty much done. Just letting the, the finish, the French polish, kind of cure it for a while. And, and I'll probably put a gold pay paint up plate on it. I, I'm so tempted to keep it. It's so nice. A really nice sound, actually. It's a Maidang, which is a Southeast Asian, and Maidang is a Thai name for the wood. And uh, Cypress, Canadian Cypress, also known as Alaskan Yellow Cedar. That's not really a cedar, it's a Cypress kind of wood. Uh, on the top. Mm, yeah. yeah. So, 
that's pretty much done. And I'm always saying, oh, I'm going to keep this one. Let me see if someone wants to buy it. It'd be a little pricier because of the wood, but not much. I'm sticking to my relatively low price scheme at the moment. The new one is a cypress, Canadian cypress back and sides and an Engelman spruce top. It's looking really good. There's a lot of bloodwood in it, a lot of bloodwood binding and stuff. And maybe, maybe the bloodwood bridge, but a friend of mine gave me some wood. I have to go and try and figure out what it is, but it has a beautiful tone to it when you tap it. So I might, it's small. I might be able to get a bridge or two out of that, you know, if I can work around the nail holes. So I might do that for the new one. But what's what's going to be special about the new one, I think, is I ordered... Oh, wow, look at the sun streaming down. Ooh, it's like God's talking to us. Hello. <laughs> Amazing. So I'm just adjusting the mic there. Oh, oh. Oh, how did that happen? Okay, so got one more bottle. Yeah, so the, the new one, I'm trying gonna try out these Whitner tuning pegs. Uh, which are a geared peg. You know, I love the peg head on these guitars. The peg head look, I guess, or style. And I, and friction pegs I, I, I find they work great. But you know, there's issues, I guess, because, anyway. So the friction, this one's by Whitner, and there's another peg called Pegheads, and another one called, shoot, Planetary Pegs something or other, I can't remember. Uh, the Whitners look good, They're, the, the ratio is around eight and a half to one, I think. So it like, takes eight turns to turn the one thing around. Wow, the sun's really streaming through. It's funny. Well, that's all right. Don't mind that, it's like a rainbow all around me. Magic. It's like magic. Yeah. Anyway, so yeah, so these pegs are geared and they might work really well, actually. I mean, I'm sure they work fine. Uh, I'm sure they work great, actually, not just fine. But, um, the aesthetics are a little different because the, the part where you turn the, the peg part. What do you call that? Anyway, the part that you'd actually physically turn with your fingers. It's a little bit bigger, right? Because the, the gearing mechanism is held within it. And it's, of course, it's some sort of composite material. It's not wood. Um, so they're a little bit thicker, I guess. Um, I've, not, I've not held them in my hands yet, but I've seen them on Ruben Diaz's uh, YouTube, and so he really recommends them. Uh, he likes them, I think. Anyway, yeah, so I'm going to try those out, and I mean, it might be, they might work out, I, and I'll let the people that have bought a guitar from me with the friction pegs, because I usually mention the possibility of, um, you know, a, a geared peg as well. I really want to stick with the, the peg head style, I guess, and, and part of it is aesthetically, I think it's really beautiful, you know, um, really beautiful. But you could argue, or arguments could be made, that because the, the string is attached to the peg, which is attached to the head, the... Jesus, what do you call it? The part where the tuning bits are, the head joint, head plate. Not the head plate, head... Damn, it's just slipped my mind. Anyway, that the place where the tuning bits are. <laughs> Behind the nut. Uh, one could argue, and has been argued, that by the strings going, it, it's a more direct connection to the wood, which then, uh, you know, has a, a different kind of vibration uh, relationship <laughs> with the neck and the body and all that stuff, right? Whereas a classical type tuning machine is more, it's metal and it's more solid, and arguments can be made, apparently. So, there you go. Yeah, so, fun. I'm having a great time making them. Let's see. Yeah. So I'm talking all about guitars today. Just, quite often I'll talk about environmental stuff in these videos, you know? Um, maybe I'll talk some environmental stuff and I'll carry and walk a bit. Yeah, I'll do that. 
Um, that might be good. I don't have much to say, the usual. I guess that, for me, the climate's getting a lot of, climate change is getting a lot of attention, at least on my Facebook feed. <laughs> But anyway, the whole insect thing is, for me, I suppose, I mean, it's all prescient, you know, it's all needs to be paid attention to and all that. But the insect declines are, well, I mean, you're starting to hear now, I'm, you know, people in the loop. I've been talking about this for, for quite a few years, about the decline of insect population, purely by observation. And mostly observation of dead bugs on car. <laughs> I don't see as many dead bugs on the car anymore. I'm really afraid that we're killing insects. <laughs> I mean, anyway, I said that too. It's pretty funny when you think about it. Jeez, I wish there were, I was killing more insects when I drive my car. I'd feel more comfortable with the fact that the insect population is uh, in, is healthier. I mean, it makes sense. I'm not saying it doesn't. It's just... Anyway, that's life, eh? That's being human. Contradictions and conundrums. And... I might need a good dose of water this morning. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, yeah, so the insect population's crashing. Here too, I was talking to a friend of mine and he's from here. She says, oh yeah, insects are, it's a whole different world here too. It's not just, you know, there's studies in Germany, it's not just Germany. And, um, you know, like I try to pay attention to it in my daily life. It's difficult because of sliding bass lines. The old sliding bass line game thing. So someone born now, the idea being that someone born now, oh, well, the amount of insects and stuff we have now, oh, well, that's just how it, how, it's just normal and that's where we base it on. But it's really applicable to everything and how we perceive things in general, but in this case, the natural world, you know? So if you, if you were like, say, living in eastern U.S., I don't know, 150 years ago, and you came back now, I mean, two things, you'd be shocked. Two contradictory things, maybe. You'd be shocked at, at the, the lack of See, even the pigeon, p passenger pigeons were it would blacken the sky for days, right, as they passed over. Like you, it would just feel like empty. But at the same time, you might go, "Wow, there's a lot of forest," <laughs> because what's? It's just like. So I mean, what's been happening is the forests are growing back, right? And that's pro I suppose really because we use we don't use wood to cook and heat and all that so much anymore. I mean, I know people that do, but it's pretty rare. So, but having all the forest aren't, doesn't seem to be bringing back the, the um, masses of uh, wildlife and things. Ugh, I'm just babbling now. Yeah, anyway, so it's, it's not a simple story, that's for sure. Uh, anyway, I'm going to pack this stuff up and I got my bottles. Can you see that? I got my bottles full. <clears throat> I could just sit here for a minute.
Yeah, I mean, just hearing these sounds, it's such a tremendous source of solace, I guess. Yeah. I was thinking about even New Brunswick, where I used to live. Um, like, it was pretty well forested. They were, you know, doing some clear cuts for sure around where I was with my friends. And, but all the forest was, you know, second, third generation and a disaster as a forest, really. I mean, I remember my friend Beth telling me stories of from el older people that she knew. It wouldn't be her experience, but back in a long time ago days. That, so from here, we used to, you could walk straight to the Bay of Fundy. The forests were so huge and open. And these huge white pine trees, you know. And during the great shipbuilding times in the 1800s, I guess, a lot of those great towering straight white pines and other trees no doubt were cut all the trees that were twisted and you know not tall and straight weren't cut I mean you know so I, anyway so the, the the forest there was just dense as hell I mean just almost impossible I mean you need a trail really to get through it and there were trails but I just think about those times I, you know have ever been in one of those old growth forests? You know? Well, I don't know what to say. It's amazing. The only thing I can... I, okay, I've been to some small, like, Cathedral Grove in BC. Uh, Vancouver Island, and... Where else? I guess in Northern Ontario I've been into some... Well, there's one island on OS... Oh... Ontario, OSA Lake, Ontario Society of Artists Lake in Killarney. Went there with my friend Susanna, a canoe trip. And my memory of it all oh, was like, oh my god, this tree, this island's not been logged. Not in a long time. There's some really old trees, but it's not just that they're big trees and old trees. There's a kind of, I don't know how else to put it other than a kind of power or energy. Do you know what I mean? In those kind of places. This, I don't know a non-woo-woo way of putting it, but it's quite palpable, at least in my experience, you know. I would argue with anyone that says that's just hogwash. It's not. I would argue with them about it. Like, I would not give up on it. I, yeah. Anyway, anyway, so I'm going to pack up and get walking. Thanks for watching. Okay, let's just turn this off. Ooh, got the rainbow again. Okay, here we go, we're back. Let's do a tour. Don't get dizzy. Right, so, where are we? We're heading back. I'm gonna go back, and then I'm gonna, going to, gonna, um, I've just, I've just glued the back onto this Cypress Engelman guitar. I'm gonna take that off and I have another box, guitar box, to continue on with. Um, yeah, so... Right, so here we go. <laughs> right. One, two, three, walk. Anyway. I'm, when I always do these, I'm just like, oh, Jesus, they're so rambling. These water talks, just like... I guess it's con it's cathartic for me, if not for anyone else. Let's have a look at the forest. There we go. Let's do that, hey? Eh? So I can talk, but you can also see some nice trees and things. Um, yeah. Well, it's definitely cathartic for me. Um, yeah, so... This isn't too dark. At some point, you know, last year, I guess the last summer, well, Thai summer, Canadian spring, last April, May-ish, I just sort of, you know, crossed the line and felt a great, um, I say disappointment, but I, I won't use that word anymore. 
That's, such, that's like your social justice. I'm so disappointed. It's like, you, know, you hear that on the videos anyway. And you say, what are you, my grandmother? Anyway, I mean, you know, I've said this before. <laughs> I'm off topic. But yeah, I mean, I'd be, I'd be, I'd sort of be concerned if my grandmother was disappointed in me. Or maybe my mom. But you know, beyond that, who cares? Anyway, yes, yeah, so I was just felt crushed, I guess, you know. Uh, I just thought, oh, I guess, you know, I feel like we've kind of been aware of the state of things, but I don't know. Anyway, the problem is words are, are tricky, right? I can say I could say a lot of words, but none of them quite fit the sense of it, you know. So that makes me not want to use the words at all. But maybe I could suffice it to say, at that point, I'm just like, you know what? I just want to make beautiful things that sound gorgeous, and just focus on that in the daily life, and that's me doing my part, you know. I'm still reading about climate. Still pay attention to all the people that are going on about it. Climate and other things, of course. A little bit fed up with reading about Trump everywhere I look. Aaron Dottie Roy did it. Made a nice comment on that. Let's switch this. Enough of me. Enough about talking about me. Let's talk about my work. <laughs> No, let's let's look at the forest for a while. Yeah. Anyways, see our little trail there. Pretty soon, probably the end of the month-ish, we'll all be going up on the big ridge and sweeping the ridge. Not all of us, but a number. I remember the year the year. Pisu Tom asked me, it may, might have been my second year there, she asked me if I wanted to come up and help, and I was so thrilled that she asked me. Um, uh, well, you know, it's just like being part of the village. I'm not really part of the village, I, I am for sure. I'm a bit of a fixture, definitely, and I would think that people know that I'm not Hopefully, anyway, I'm going anywhere. And uh, I'm a sticker, not a lever. Anyway, so, 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 yeah, so we'll be heading up on the ridge and sweeping that out and having a good time. Um, yeah. I love that. Just making my way down through some rocks. Well, I mentioned the leaves because there's the trail's kind of covered in leaves. Sometimes I'll bring a broom up here and sweep the leaves away, you know? It's my little uh, community service. <laughs> um, people sweep leaves here a lot. And. I think I know why. Because a lot of snakes look like a big pile of leaves. <laughs> that might be part of it. Also, it's just sort of nice to feel things are neat and tidy. That's part of it too. But I bet you the root of it though is the the leaves look a lot like as some snakes look a lot like a pile of leaves. I always do my walking filming going down, right? Because if I try to do it going up, I'll just be like, oh, oh. <laughs> too, too breathy. And back at Kendall, let's see what else. Kendall's happening. Lulu and I are working towards our fourth den this year. We'll challenge it and try for it and do our best. Anyway, 
I just love being back at Kendo and practicing with the kids at Lana Kendo and awesome. What else? What else? What else? Hey, if you want to buy a guitar, let me know. This new, the new ones are. You know, each one gets better. I mean, one thing. Oh, more steep rocks. I keep wondering, because I kind of free form them, eh? The guitars. Maybe I should flip it. If I flip it, you can see my deep my deep concentration at work. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I, I just kind of freeform the guitars. I don't use a mold. I use kind of a, sol I use a solera, which is dished for the top. And it's a pretty traditional way of making it using the Spanish heel, which is a traditional way of making Spanish guitars. Not the only way, but one of them. And so, it's not totally even all the time. Like it might be a little wavy or like right now I think that the on the lower bout like looking at the guitar head on like the right side of the lower bout, bout might be a little a tiny bit sort of wider in this bottom swoop kind of a little bit millimeter or two probably. Anyway I mean I see that and go oh if I used a mold then it would just be boom damn less likely to do that but um I kind of I'm really in between like I want to make them have that sort of oh it's perfect but I also like the idea of it just oh what's going on here anyway, gotta be careful the bugs crawling up my kilt um yeah I wouldn't wear the kilt with no leg coverings on a long hike but the water one I feel okay with shorter Anyway, over concentrate rocks. Ush, ush, Anyway, yeah, kendo. Oh, it's because my ankles are sore. I always sore after I do kendo. Get back to it, you know. Um, that's all right. They're a little sore now, but not much. Um, right. So the guitars. Uh, I don't know. I kind of like the idea of it not being in a mold. I don't know. I have to ponder that and maybe I can chat with other guitar makers, their opinion. It's really an aesthetic thing, right? Because it doesn't affect the sound at all or the structure. Like those things are the two important things to me, right? There's the sound that comes out and that it being a viable, physical, oops, strong structure. As in, it's not going to fall apart in your hands. <laughs> um, and also, because I'm making flamenco type guitars, um, you know, I build them, they're walking a line in terms of lightness and stuff like that, you know? Definitely walking a line. Um, yeah. That's what I like. Anyway, yeah, so maybe I should do that. I should, there's a few people I'm friends with on Facebook that I could ask. I might ask my friend Luis, actually. I don't know him, but I feel like he's my friend. He's an incredible guitar maker. I mean, when I see his work, I'm just like, okay. <laughs> Inspiration abounds. Very, very beautiful work, detailed. Um, yeah. Buy one of my guitars. But if you want, buy one of his too. I wouldn't be upset if you bought one of his instead of mine. We're all, we're all brothers and sisters in Luth Luthieri land. Anyway. Yeah, this, so this is about as rambly as a video as they come. I'm coming to, let's switch. I'm coming to my bit of a favorite spot in this trail hike. Um, as if anyone who's watched this might remember that there's this spot right here where things kind of open up, you know. You can see some sky. Look at that beautiful blue sky. It's not a cloud in the sky today. Not here anyway.
também. Maybe I could wrap this up. Maybe I could wrap this little thing up by saying the idea. Let's see, what, what, what was I chatting about? I was talking about. Oh, yeah, just like. Oh, I just want to make guitars or, and things like that and just keep a simple life, try to create some beauty in the world. Walk for my water. Laugh at the North Americans. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fools, a lot of them. Anyway, no, but I guess that my what I'm trying to get to is, look, where I live, I can do that. I'm really, really lucky. I don't, it's a little bit, it's not always easy to live here physically and everything. I'll, I'll even admit that begrudgingly. But two things, you don't want to get too comfortable. And second thing is, boy, I'm not, I'm not off the grid. I'm not living a non-modern life. Like I have a motorbike and stuff and go in the city, but you can pull back pretty far in my experience here. Um, I'm not saying that just come to Thailand and you can pull back. That's not how it works, right? I'm just in a very fortunate situation here. Well, gratefulness, that's important. Every day. Anyway, my, I live in a house that my friends own. Um, and uh, just lucky, just lucky. You know, appreciate it every day it comes. And if it comes to an end, it comes to an end, I suppose, in terms of have to move. But so far, so good. Anyway, hope everyone's doing great. And I'll check in with my next water walk, maybe. We'll see. Ciao.